Hi, my name is Hiroshi, and I'm a graduate student here at MIT. I'm studying electrical engineering. Right now, I'm in Killing Core on a very sunny day. And today, I will show you how solar cell works. Life on Earth would not exist without the sun. As the population reaches 9 billion people in the year 2050, it has become very important to start thinking about how we use and get our energy. Here we show a simulation of world population growth. Each dot represents 1 million people. We will start in the year 1107 AD, the era of the Crusades, and end with what's expected in the year 2030. So clearly, the world needs more energy. The population growth is inevitable. We need to find better resources of energy. Today, I will explain to you a solar cell. Solar cells are very, very complicated, as you can see here. I'm not going to talk about any of this today. I will show you a very intuitive idea of how a solar cell works, the way I like to think of it. Before I get to the details of the solar cell, we need to understand what is energy. Energy is what powers things. Your car is powered by the fossil fuel energy, the gasoline. The bicycle that you ride is powered by the pedaling energy of your legs. And lastly, your TV and your video games are powered by electrical energy. Solar cells provide this electrical energy. And this is the type of energy I will talk to you today. Electricity is a major source of energy. If you look around your room right now, the light bulb, the video that you're watching right now, almost 90% of the things you use use electrical energy. So the experiment that I will show you is very simple. I will have a solar cell that is connected by two wires to a light source. By shining light onto the solar cell, the solar cell is able to provide energy to the light bulb and back, giving off light. The way I like to think about electricity is very simple. Forget about electrons flowing to a circuit with a potential and a resistor. Just think about it as having little people in your device pushing a heavy box forward. When you turn on your Game Boy, these people are pushing this box around, allowing the devices to function the way they do. The way I like to think about what happens in a solar cell is I like to think of it as a two-story house. In the first floor, you have the people that I was talking about earlier, sleeping. And in the second floor, the box. When the light comes in, it zaps one of the people and wakes them up. And because this person's only goal is to push boxes around, he goes to the second floor and starts pushing the box, providing energy, providing electricity. After he pushes the box off the ledge, he jumps off and goes back to sleep, completing the cycle of electricity. OK, what I have here is a polymer solar cell. Now, attached here, like I did, I showed you before, a light bulb, an LED light. 
And you can see how it is turned on right now. By changing the tilt, I could change the dimness of the LED by changing the amount of energy produced. Now what I want to emphasize is that today I gave a very vague description of a solar cell. I want you guys to really think about the problems we're dealing with. You can see how big this piece of solar cell is to power just one light. And just like I showed you the glow before, the as the population is increasing and the, and the number of the gadgets that you use are increasing, there needs to be a better way to get energy. This, now I'm going to cut it. That's why I need you guys to really, even though it may be boring, to really see the big picture and really put the effort to learn the math and physics behind the solar cell so that you can understand it intuitively and also 